What's up PvZ fans, it's Strangelove here, and we've just received some crazy new info about the Backyard Battleground in Garden Warfare 2. There's a ton of new things shown in the latest Backyard Battlegrounds trailer, so for this video I'm gonna break it down and take a closer look at some of this cool new stuff. Alright you guys, let's go check it out. First off, we see some action-packed gameplay taking place in the Backyard Battleground. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with what this is, the Backyard Battleground is going to be like a personal hub zone in Garden Warfare 2, where players can customize their characters, enter a game mode, and a bunch of other things that we'll cover in this video. Now, I'm going to cover things a bit out of order from the trailer, just for the sake of explanation. So first off, I want to explain all the chaos that's going on in the Backyard Battlegrounds. Now, even though this is a personal hub, we do know that you can invite your friends to come and join you for this epic battle that can take place in the backyard, hence the name Backyard Battlegrounds. And in this trailer, Jeremy explains that to begin the battle, all you have to do is raise this flag in the center of the battlegrounds after making a pretty epic entrance onto the battlefield. Once you raise the flag, the battlegrounds turns into sort of a horde mode where waves of enemies begin to attack. Now, if we look closely at this little meter at the top, it'll name what kind of AI characters are going to be attacking, and based off the gameplay, it seems that pretty much all of the variants of that character type will come to attack you at the center. And of course, if you raise the flag as a plant, then you'll have zombies attack you and vice versa. Now, it's also worth pointing out that this trailer showcases all sorts of new characters, including some new bosses that we can look forward to fighting on the battlefield. For example, right here we see the Giga Torchwood, which is this big flaming tree boss that was shown in some previous Garden Warfare 2 footage, and right to his side you see this gigantic laser bean, which is also probably a boss, and I guess we get lucky enough to fight two bosses at once. Maybe that has something to do with the difficulty settings, but we'll just have to wait and see. Alright, so let's quickly put things into perspective by looking at this overhead map. So previously, all we had really seen of the Backyard Battlegrounds was the Crazy Dave Treehouse side of the backyard, which only takes up this left chunk of the map where the leaf is. Likewise, on the other side, we see Zomburbia, which we haven't gotten a close look at until now, and it appears that these two sections are symmetrical as far as having a quest board and other similar features, but their purpose is for switching between the plant and zombie characters. Now down the middle, we have the main battlegrounds where the two sides converge and you raise the flag in the center to start the fight. There's also all this other stuff on the lower section of the map that takes up quite a bit of space. So in the lower left corner, there's a soccer field, or a football field as the rest of you call it, and we briefly do get to see a close-up look of the field with the sunflower here in this gameplay. Now if you look closely at the logo on the soccer ball and somewhat on the field as well, the logo says P Sports, which doesn't sound too awesome when it's called P Sports, but uh, it's supposed to be like EA Sports, but it's P-E-A. Get it? P-Sports? <laughs> but uh, I guess if I say P-Sports, you guys will know what I'm talking about, right? But anyway, if you look underneath the scoreboard, there's a start button switch, which means that there's probably going to be some sort of soccer mini game that we can play on this field as well. And speaking of mini games, we also get a brief look at the target shooting mini game, where you basically go through a garden gnome shooting gallery and try to finish the course with the best time and probably with the most accuracy. And you know, since this is in the Backyard Battleground, you could also probably use the shooting range to test out character shooting abilities, like if you unlock a new variant and you want to test them out before taking them to multiplayer, this could be a really cool way to do that. So I'm excited to try out this little shooting gallery minigame. Alright, so now let's take a closer look at some of the stuff in Crazy Dave's side of the backyard. So first up, we have the multiplayer portal, which is something we've already seen, but this is basically where you set up your multiplayer match settings, and then you can hop into the portal to enter the match. And then over here we have the changing booth closet, which is basically the character customization screen where you can edit your character's outfits and gestures. And in this footage, we actually see quite a bit of new customizations that look pretty awesome. But while both of those things are really cool, my absolute favorite part of this hub region is right here in the center of the tree. And that's the stat room, or what I like to call the trophy tree. Now, as you can see, the trophy tree features a huge billboard that has all of your personal stats on it. And of course, the sticker book is making its return as a way to review all of the characters you've unlocked. But what makes this room extra cool are these little bobbleheads that are set up all around the room representing each character, and I was just so excited to see these because not only are they super adorable, I thought this was a really creative way for them to represent the characters in the game, so leave me a comment below and let me know what you think of these awesome little bobbleheads. Now, if we pause the screen right here, we can actually get a sneak peek at some of the new plant variants that haven't been revealed yet. So on the cactus side, we've seen pretty much all of these variants except for this little gray one in the back. 
and I'm not sure what this variant is, but it sort of looks like maybe a burnt tree trunk or maybe a petrified cactus, so hopefully they'll reveal that one soon. And over on the kernel corn side, we've recently seen the pops corn variant, but there's three new ones sitting there. And if we actually look at the next frame where they enter the corn stats, we see the names barbecue corn and mob cob, uh, so we're missing one. But if we go back to the bobbleheads, we see there's this black and white variant, and I think that's most likely going to be the mob cob since he's got an old school gangster pinstripe suit on. And as for the barbecue corn, I'm not really sure, but if I had to take a guess, it's probably the one with the little chicken head thing, uh, because it kind of looks like he has foil around him, like when you grill a corn cob, plus you could throw chicken on the grill. And if we look closely at the split screen footage, we can actually see this variant in action. We see that in the corner it has a spicy hotshot for its weapon, and it also seems to be the fire variant for the kernel corn, so I'm going to assume that this is in fact the barbecue corn because it would just make sense. And as for the last one on the right, I have no idea what that is, so uh, leave me a comment down below with your guesses as to what this variant for kernel corn might be. Alright, so going back to that promotion screen, we now know that players can actually earn XP and level up each individual character and grant them a promotion. And once a character gets promoted, you get a fancy new plaque to show off that appears on the tombstone when you vanquish people. So based on the image, it seems that there's a brown, silver, and gold plaque, and then I guess maybe a jewel plaque, and finally a diamond or a platinum plaque, which all look very snazzy. So there's definitely enough to keep players busy in Garden Warfare 2, and most of that comes down to quests that players can do to gain experience points and coins. Now we've already seen the quest board before, but I want to point out that along with coins and XP multipliers, we also see that we can earn stars. And since coins are normally used to unlock things like sticker packs, the stars must be used for something else. Now if we go back to the soccer footage where the sunflower opens that gold treasure chest full of coins, we can just barely make out a star on the front of the chest, which to me means that you need to use stars to unlock the chest at all. Now we don't know how or where to find these chests just yet, but they do seem to be tied to your character progression somehow since they are found in the backyard battlegrounds. Alright, so the last awesome thing that I want to talk about are the new heroes that are found in these little crystal balls throughout the backyard. Now in the trailer, heroes are described as another way to obtain missions, so they seem to be sort of like quest masters that you'd find in an MMO. In this footage, we're shown DaveBot3000, who's this little robot inside some sort of garage, and then there's Agent Rose, and when you go through her crystal ball portal, you're sent to this amazing castle with stained glass windows and just beautiful colors. It's just gorgeous, so I'm really excited to go there. And what I thought was super cool was when you look at these hero portals, uh, they actually have some relevant scenery in the background depending on your perspective. So if you look toward the Agent Rose portal on the left, you can barely see that beautiful castle off in the distance, which is apparently where the portal also sends you. So that means that the yellow portal is probably going to be for the Colonel Corn hero, and we can see a little farmhouse off in the distance that you'd probably get sent to if you talk to that hero. And likewise, the Orange Grove portal is most likely for the Citron hero, and you can just barely make out this big glowing sphere sort of hovering in the sky, which must be some kind of maybe futuristic machine since Citron is from the future. Alright you guys, I think that covers everything that I wanted to talk about from the trailer, and I know this video is a little bit on the long side, but they've just added so much awesome stuff to Garden Warfare 2, and that was just Backyard Battleground, and it probably wasn't even everything in Backyard Battleground. So this has just made me so much more excited for the game, and I can't wait to play it with you all in February. Make sure to leave me a comment down below on what you love the most about this trailer, and let's keep this conversation going. Also, if you want to see more Garden Warfare 2 content in the near future, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. As always, thank you so much for watching, stay strange my loves, and until next time, this is Strangelove, signing out.